Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here. What I have to share in today's report is literally going to change the way that you look at the coronavirus. In fact, it's really changed mine. And for quite some time, I believed that there was a higher mortality rate than what they were telling us. In fact, it turns out that it's lower than what they're telling us. And the truth of the matter is the mainstream media has been hyping this panic, at least from the leftists. And there's more to the story. And I believe that they want President Trump out. Now, let me just add this disclaimer. The virus is bad. If you catch it, it's worse than the flu. Please don't shoot the messenger. And just as a reminder, I want to encourage you guys, please make sure to sign up on restrictedrepublic.com. I share additional information that I cannot share on YouTube on Restricted Republic. And right now, if you use the code free, the number four and the letter U, you get it free for 30 days with no contract. But that's just a side note. And keep in mind, I am risking a lot by even sharing what I'm about to share right now on YouTube. YouTube. But let's go on over to the World Health Organization because I want you to hear what they say the mortality rate of this thing is. And by the way, after doing this report, I've kind of changed gears on the coronavirus. We'll take a listen to here we have uh, the United Nations, uh, Dr. Tedros, the World Health Organization director, and he tells you that we're at a 3.4 mortality rate. Take a listen. Globally, about 3.4% of reported COVID-19 cases have died. By comparison, seasonal flu generally kills far fewer than 1% of those infected. Third, we have vaccines and therapeutics for seasonal flu. But at the, at the moment, there is no vaccine and no specific treatment for COVID-19. All right, so let me just pause right there. Um, so he basically says, and, and I'm going to, and I'm going to give you all the facts that I've gotten, but he basically says, okay, the flu is at like, you know, less than 1% and COVID-19 is a three to 4% mortality rate, which is three to four times, if you will, much worse than the flu. Well, let's look at where he grabbed his numbers. Okay. Now I, I got this information originally from the gatewaypundit.com in this article titled breaking exclusive, the coronavirus fatality rate reported by the media is completely completely inaccurate. The actual rate is less than the flu. Media is lying again, and I'm going to prove it to you in this report. Now they came up with all the information and data, and here's the chart that they put together, but I'm going to verify every fact on this chart. So, you know, it comes from the CDC. Okay. Now this is the flu season of 2019, 2020, and we're going to compare that to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, if you will, that's spreading the globe. Okay. Number of deaths right now, this flu season is 22,000. Where did we get that from? Well, we got that from the CDC right here. CDC estimates that so far there have been 36 million flu, in, flu illnesses. That means, okay, 36 million is how many people they suspect has the flu but aren't reporting it, right? 370,000 hospitalizations and 22,000 deaths, okay? That number coincides with this number, 22,000 deaths this season. That's where they got that. The second number, 222,552 is the number of confirmed cases through testing. How many people tested positive for the flu? Well, that would be this number right here, 222,552 people tested positive. We have to compare apples to apples, not apples to beets or oranges, we have to be the same here. So if that's the case, right, we have this number and we divide it into this number. What does that equal? Well, let's just start here. 22,000 divided by, right, 222,552 equals, that's your 10% mortality rate. So that's where you get that 10% rate right there. But you know what they did? Instead, World Health Organization, how come they didn't share this number? Because if we're talking about COVID-19, what they're doing with COVID-19 is they're taking the number of deaths that, let's say, the number of deaths at this time of, of the making of this was 6,668, and they divided it by how many people tested positive, the test numbers, and it actually comes out lower to more like a 4% mortality rate, right? This is current, and I'm gonna do it with the current numbers in just a moment, but if we're going to take coronavirus and say, okay, if we're gonna compare the flu, with, you have to compare the flu with the number of people who tested positive for the flu. If we're gonna compare the number of deaths for the coronavirus with the people who tested 
positive. And I hope I'm getting that number out right. You, apples to apples, you, you got to compare the same. Now, what WHO did, right, World Health Organization, is they took the number of deaths, right, and they divided it by the entire amount of estimated cases, which puts this more at 0.1%. It, it, it makes it go down a lot. So they, they divided the number of deaths by the estimated cases to come up with less than 1% mortality rate. Well, how come we didn't do that with coronavirus? You see, because they're telling people to stay home from coronavirus, don't get tested if you have minor stuff. So chances are the number of people with the coronavirus is already in the millions, right? But where's the million number to divide it by? It's not there. So if we actually divided the number by the millions, it would be more around the line of the flu. Now, I really thought, and I could be wrong, maybe there's something else they don't know and the mortality rate is different, but what the WHO has just done is deceive the entire public because you can't divide one by uh, estimated cases and not the other by actual cases. It doesn't add up. You can't say, we're gonna divide coronavirus by actual cases, but when we take the amount for the flu, it's gonna go by estimated cases. Something doesn't add up here. Now, where is it actually different? Well, there's, there, there is a couple things that are different about it, and I'm going to bring that up. And I said, this video will change the way you look at it. I really hope I'm getting this out right. But let's, let's go on right now, right, to the current number. Let's get the current number, right? 9,318 deaths. Let's do that. 9,318 deaths divided by 227,743 confirmed cases. And that equals a mortality rate of around 4%. 4%. 227,000 tested cases, not the total number of estimated cases in the world, which is obviously going to be a lot higher. You want to know something else? Is that 99% of people who died from it are, well, take this Washington Examiner article. This was published March 18th. 99% who die from the coronavirus in Italy had previous medical conditions, says a study. There's definitely an agenda here, right? Are, is this a serious disease? Yes, it is. Is it killing people? Yes, it is. Is it horrible when people catch it? Yes, it is. It's not a walk in the park. People are going to die and a lot of people are. A lot of people die from flu and AIDS and car accidents, all, all of this. But 99% they're telling us died, had previous medical conditions. This is not Lisa Haven. This is Washington Examiner actually saying this. Let's look at another one here. Here we are on worldmeters.info. Age, sex, existing conditions of COVID-19 cases and cases. Let's, let's look at that. What's the percent here? 80 years or older is the biggest mortality rate. That doesn't mean that younger people aren't going to die because they will but I'm just showing you the actual facts. Let's look at something else because here's the thing. They're, they're also saying, well, what about all the crematory places that are getting full? Well, here's the thing. And, and, I, and I ran a lot of reports on this about crematories and I'm almost rethinking some of them because I've watched people in China and some of these I didn't air because I, I was skeptical, but there was, there was videos of footage of China, people yelling from the window, it's fake, it's a hoax, it's all about money, yelling that from their balconies, right? And, and, and uh, if I can find them again, I'll put them on restrictedrepublic.com and that's where I have to put them from here on out, a lot of those. And so get on over to Restricted Republic, use the code free for you and get that discount or save 10. If you're gonna do the yearly, use the code save and the number 10 and you'll get $10 off the entire year, pay it in advance and then you could watch the videos the entire year and don't have to worry about it at that discounted rate. Uh, but use the code save 10 on the annual, but anyhow, what I'm saying here is, is uh, I called and talked to crematory specialists, quite a few of them, because I wanted to get an idea, how many bodies can we burn in the US at a crematory? Max capacity, okay, right. It, it estimated anywhere from 12 bodies a day to up to 35 bodies a day at some mass capacities. Now, that's an average, right? Keep in mind, some are going to be less, 
some are going to be more. Then there's the aspect of permits. I don't know if you guys are aware, but in order to burn these bodies, you have to get a permit. Now they could waive that later, right? But there's a delayed process on getting some of the permits that they're running into, okay? Because the government wants their piece of every freaking pie out there. But anyway, uh, 12 to 35 bodies a day. So we add a couple more bodies to that. You can easily overwhelm the system. It, it, it's not too hard, if you will, to overwhelm something. And keep in mind, if, if, if a nursing home gets hit, like what happened in Washington, or a, a place where there's a lot of people susceptible, uh, like your, your uh, hospices or whatever, you can easily increase that. Just like if the flu got into something, it can increase that, that vulnerability. And here's the difference, is, is with the COVID-19, it is worse when you catch it as compared to the flu. That's a fact. And I'm going to get into a couple other facts, but let's get onto this average. How many people die every single day in the United States of America? 7,452 in the U.S. Someone dies every 12 seconds. Every 12 seconds. COVID-19 would increase that. I'm not trying to downplay that, but what I'm saying is they're blowing this way over and above and putting the entire country on lockdown when there's better things they can do like like help the vulnerable like like isolate the vulnerable let's take care of those who can be really susceptible versus shutting the whole damn country down and putting us into an economic crisis and causing panic where we're wiping out our grocery stores we're wiping out our food supply and for those who aren't prepared they're going to panic and we're talking about long shutdowns now and I'm and I haven't gotten there but here's the other thing how many people die every year in the United States 2,813,503 503 registered deaths, over two, almost 3 million deaths per year in the United States. And that was in 2017. 3 million people on average. Now, here's what I predict. You know, COVID-19 is going to spread whether we lock down the country for a time or not. When it, when it opens back up, it's going to spread, right? But hey, 3 million people almost every year are dying on average from a whole slew of different things. And here's what I predict is there are going to be some hospitals that get overwhelmed and some that aren't, but we have the ability to spread them out. And the reason that they're having problems in some of these other areas like China and Italy, is because nobody wants to deal with the bodies. Nobody wants a COVID-19 body because everybody, uh, uh, you know, because of what it does, it gets us really sick. It's not something you want, but this isn't like Ebola. If Ebola broke out, I would say batten down every hatch and shut every everything down. This doesn't have a 60 to 70 mortality rate like Ebola. That's how high Ebola is. In fact, you've got a 90% chance that you're gonna be just fine. You know, a lot more 80, 90, percent chance of being a-okay and getting through this. You see? But you see? But here we have this article here, Infowars.com. It's also Michael Schneider, the economic collapse bog who originally wrote it. The United States government is prepping for an 18-month pandemic. And they're prepping for critical shortages. Now, they've been prepping for a while, but if they can't calm the panic, calm the public, then we're going to end up in lines and bread lines and, and, and all of that. If, if, if this thing continues on the path that the mainstream media is putting it on, right? And not only that, but here we have New York reports, and this is on the uh, Epic Times, major jump in COVID-19 cases now has over 4,000 patients. That's because they upped the ante and started testing people there in New York. And most of which are doing just fine and some which are not. There's going, you're going to hear stories. I'm going to hear stories from you guys. There's my brother, my loved one, my uncle, my aunts in ICU. One didn't make it through. One did just fine. The other had hardly, you know, symptoms of the flu. Three, keep in mind, almost 3 million people a year die in the United States of America. And I'm just trying to be real. We're all going to know somebody who gets this thing. But here's what they say in this article and why I wanted to point it out is nobody can tell you whether this is going to be 30 days. 60 days, four months, five months, or nine months. Nobody can tell you when this is going to end. I've talked to all the experts, right? It is a situation that one of the most disruptive that I have ever seen, and this is coming out of freaking Kumo, Como, right? I, I, I can't, I can't. 
But here we have it. Is COVID-19 going to have burst in areas? Yeah. Why? Well, let's do the flu versus COVID-19. And I said this is one of the most important reports that I've done, but let's let's compare the two. How are they different? Well, they start with le lethality. They say, oh, the mortality rate is three times higher. No, it isn't. I just blew that out of the water. You can't take the number of estimated cases and divide that by death and then not take the number and then and then not take the number of estimated cases for COVID-19 and then divide that. No, they're taking the test count and dividing it by the deaths for COVID-19, but they're not taking the test count for the flu and dividing it by the number of deaths. That's not apples to apples. So that's blowing out of the water. I used to think maybe there is a higher mortality rate and maybe, but in all reality, this isn't real math. So it's almost as if they want to cause panic. It's almost as if they planned this because Ukraine didn't work, Russia didn't work, and they wanted President Trump out of office. I'm not happy fully with what's going on right now and the way things are being handled. Let me just make that clear. But anyway, that one kind of out of the water. Containment, okay, this one's correct. People infected with coronavirus can transmit it to others even if they experience a mild cough and are otherwise healthy. True. What makes COVID-19 a little worse than the flu? It is worse than the flu, right? It is. Okay, why? Not necessarily because of mortality rate, at least off the numbers that they're giving us. And I told you, I'm kind of changing course now, but at least on the numbers. But keep in mind, people are going to die. It's going to get ugly here in the U.S. because of the panic, because of the spreading of the virus, and because of everything the mainstream media is putting out there. But anyhow, it is, when you catch it, it's worse, right? You could get higher temperature. Uh, some of us could end up in ICU, and but most of us are going to get through it. Some of us won't, right? If it, 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 according to what they're telling us, the more susceptible people, and that's why I say we need to keep them isolated and keep them safe and, and, and protect them. But at the, main at the same time, not crash our dang economy. But anyway, it's worse. So when you get COVID-19, you're gonna feel sicker than you do when you have the flu. At least many of us will, right? So that's one thing. And the other thing is it spreads easily and it's gonna, it spreads more than the common flu. Why? Because no one's immune to it. It's a brand new flu on, on the forefront. No one's immune to it right now. So of course, mo a lot more people are going to get it because some people who have had the flu before, you, you know, you, you, you don't get it the following year because you're a little more susceptible. Well, the susceptibility for COVID-19 is not there. So that's what makes it more contagious. These are true facts, right? So it is more contagious by nature. It's also, uh, and I wrote some notes here, so I'm gonna pull those up. Um, it's more transferable and people who don't have any symptoms basically can spread it. That's the other thing, because it has a long incubation period. And then the other thing is you can re-catch it. You can catch it more than once, see? So that, that's the thing. So if there is no true immunity to it, who's to say this thing is gonna ever go away? It's not. You know, it, it could go down and then come back up again in a couple of years or whatever. But they're already talking about 18 months to years. You know, if they, if they start batting down the hatches, they're already three weeks in, three weeks in, in Italy to a lockdown. Three weeks. China, I don't, months, China, right? Because they have a communist regime, but but we're supposed to be like China. Don't get me wrong. This virus isn't good. And, I, and I'm not saying, I'm saying it, it is a bad virus. I'm saying that. But I'm also saying I want real information. If you're going to put our country into a panic and cause an economic meltdown, millions of people are losing their jobs. Millions. For what? And I, and I think I, I get so upset and the mainstream media has a lot to do with it. And you know what? And I, I'm going to be watching this closer and I've got so much to say, but the, the truth of the matter is this is where we're at. And like I've said before, we allow it once this kind of quarantine lockdown, America, you know, is never going to be the same. They're going to tell everybody start social distancing forever. Amen. You know what that's going to do to our country, right? I get it right now. Great, we need a social distance, but they don't want any face-to-face -face communication anymore. They're telling us stay six feet apart. That's not going to end after COVID-19. Don't shake, don't touch hands, don't give hugs. They want all sense of humanity 
gone. They already took it with our phones, right? Half of our teenagers are glued to the phones and, and they're sitting next to each other, talking on the phone, texting to one another. Now they, we're gonna take it one step further. Now you can't even touch anymore. The America you're about to know is not the America you're going to want. And after this, they're gonna pass more rules and legislation against, against us, against our freedom. And I value freedom a lot. And I am mad because my kids are about to lose every ounce of freedom and maybe not even know. But welcome to a new America. From here on out, every virus that pops up, let's put them under quarantine again. Hey, and then when the vaccine becomes available, you either get the vaccine and they're not going to say we force you. They're just going to say, well, you don't have the vaccine. You can't travel. You don't have the vaccine. You can't ride in trains or airports or subways. They're going to force it on everyone. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. And that's not even right. Anyhow, I'd love to get your thoughts, comments, and concerns. Please don't forget to check out my partner at My Patriot Supply. If you guys don't have food storage, you need to have food storage on hand. And right now, I believe they're uh, two months-ish out on some of the shipping, but I've still put in an order because they're talking 18 months on this thing. I mean, it could go way out. And so at least I've got something in the making. So give them a call or uh, go to my Patriot or go to uh, preparewithlisa.com. It's my Patriot supply products. Uh, they're out some time on some shipping, but give them a call. Get your product today at preparewithlisa.com. Anyhow, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven signing out.